Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is also known as SIBO. Now, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth occurs when there is an increase in the bacterial population in the small intestines. So let's examine for a minute what this actually means. See, once you swallow the food and it's done digesting in the stomach, it next enters the small intestines. And this is the area sometimes referred to as the kitchen area, where the food you ate is now being absorbed into the bloodstream to be taken all throughout the body. From the small intestine, it then enters the large intestines, also known as the garbage area, where lots of bacteria work on it to break it down into our stool to then be eliminated by the body. Now this is very important. You're not, supposed to <clears throat> you're not supposed to have a lot of bacteria in the small intestines. This area has to be very clean because this is the area where you're absorbing the nutrients into the bloodstream. So it must remain very sterile. And this is also both important and very interesting. <clears throat> the small intestines is 20 feet long, but the large intestines is five feet long. Yet the food remains in the small intestines for only two hours compared to the large intestine where the food stays there for two days. You must keep the food moving fairly rapidly in the small intestines so no pathogenic bacteria begins to grow. <clears throat> now the small intestines have very few bacteria, only 10,000 bacteria per milliliter of fluid, but the large intestine has one trillion bacteria per milliliter of fluid. So nature made it where we have relatively very few bacteria in the small intestines. So let's think about how our small intestines could develop an overgrowth of bacteria. And as I always state in all of my videos, the causes are usually numerous and they're a little different in each person. And today I'd like to discuss four main causes of SIBO, although there's probably several other contributing factors that could either cause it or add to the severity of the condition. Now the first cause, which is fairly obvious, is lack of friendly bacteria residing in the intestines. They perform many functions, like the absorption of nutrients, they prevent food allergies and autoimmune diseases, but they also prevent the growth of pathogenic bacteria, or the bad bacteria which could harm us. And these friendly bacteria are depleted by many types of pharmaceuticals, such as antibiotics, birth control pills, steroids, vaccines, and acid reflux medicines. So once they're depleted, the pathogenic bacteria start to overgrow. So in this case, we want to make sure we always address our gut microbiome whenever we have to take any of these types of medications, which will prevent SIBO and other types of infections. That's why it's good to learn about the best probiotics and how to make homemade yogurt, lassi, buttermilk, and takra with the best yogurt starter cultures to ensure a good balance of friendly bacteria in the gut. Now, the second cause of SIBO is the use of acid reflux medicines. So think about this. Nature made it so once we swallow the food after we chew it, the first place it goes is in the stomach. And the hydrochloric acid found in the stomach not only breaks down the food into a liquid acid, but it also kills any infection coming in from the outside world. So taking acid reflux medicines, which take away the stomach acid, can set the stage for infection to grow and thrive in the stomach, which is then squirted into the small intestines or the kitchen area, causing many people to develop SIBO. If you can, listen to both my gallbladder video and my video on acid reflux, where I indicate how the better way to treat acid reflux is by stimulating the flow of bile out of the gallbladder. The bile coming out of the gallbladder moves the food downwards through the gut and also alkalinizes the acids coming out of the stomach. So if the bile becomes thick like a sludge, it might not squirt out when the stomach pours acid into the duodenum or the first part of the small intestines, causing the acids to turn around and move upwards into the stomach and esophagus, causing acid reflux. So in these cases, we have to give all the herbs, foods, and spices to thin out the bile and encourage it to move out of the gallbladder, which would prevent the acid reflux. This is much more effective and less risky than taking away the stomach acid. Now, the third reason for SIBO is lack of movement through the gut. 
Again, the food has to move quickly through the small intestines so infection doesn't begin to breed in there. And it's the job, again, of the gallbladder to create two types of movement in the small intestines so the food doesn't sit there, which could cause SIBO. Once you swallow the food, the bile flows out of the gallbladder, creating one type of movement, which is called peristalsis, which are gentle muscular contractions that push the food through. The second type of movement caused by the bile flow is called the migrating motor complex, or the MMC. See, our gut is working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even when we're not eating. And what goes on when you're not eating is crucial for your gut health. The migrating motor complex is a wave of electrical activity whose sole purpose is to clean your gut. And it's different from regular motility in the gut because it isn't stimulated by the presence of food in the gut. In fact, it happens three hours after your last meal. When you feel your stomach growling when it's empty like that, that's the migrating motor complex. It's also known as the housekeeping wave because it keeps the small intestines very clean. And it turns out that it is primarily the action of the gallbladder emptying the bile that stimulates the migrating motor complex. So if the bile doesn't squirt out the way it should, then the food could just sit in the gut too long, developing the pathogenic bacteria. Again, listen to my gallbladder video to make sure you always address the flow of bile, since there's many instances in one's lifetime where it might not flow correctly. And this is true even in children and in babies. So the first step here is to get the bile flowing again so it can stimulate peristalsis and the MMC, which will in turn prevent SIBO. Now, before moving on to the next reason for SIBO, I'd like to add here that in Ayurveda, we recognize that when we swallow the food, it has to flow downwards and eventually exit outside the body in our bowel movements. But if vata is too high and the person is nervous, anxious, worried, rushing too much during the day, stressed, going to bed late, then in all these cases, the apana vata, which is that subdosha of vata, which is responsible for making sure that the food always moves downwards, it might flow upwards, creating a lack of motility in the gut, which also causes SIBO. So here you have to make sure you always address the vata imbalances, which could be fueling the SIBO symptoms. Now the fourth cause of SIBO is that food might regurgitate from the large intestine into the small intestines, or from the garbage area with all the bacteria into the sterile kitchen area. Again, this could happen partly due to the apana flowing upwards, and it could also happen if there are some problems with digestion anywhere higher up, like in the pancreas, or the stomach, the gallbladder, or the liver. Because if the food doesn't digest well, the valve, which separates the small intestines from the large intestines, known as the ileocecal valve, could remain open, allowing the contents of the large intestine to flow back into the small intestines, causing a painful situation in the right lower quadrant, and causing subsequent infection to grow in the small intestines, or SIBO. So the answer to this problem lies in fixing all the problems with digestion so that the ileocecal valve can work the way nature intended, sealing off the kitchen area from the garbage area. So now you can see why just taking an antibiotic to kill the SIBO infections in the small intestines might not always work. Initially, you might have some relief because you just killed the infection. But if you don't address all these other root causes, it could grow back, which it does in the large majority of the SIBO cases. But rest assured that Ayurveda provides us with all the remedies and treatment modalities to address all the underlying conditions mentioned here. To get the gut back the way nature intended, where it automatically knows how to prevent these types of infections from growing. Thank you.